Greetings Stamp Sleuths. Today we're going to be investigating stamps from Australia. I have a map here showing Australia and the various early states of Australia, which is what makes up the whole entire uh, continent. And then, yes, it is an island continent. Uh, before I begin, I do want to address an issue that's been brought up on um, my uh, comments section uh, for YouTube. Uh, some people are saying that my stamps are not detailed enough or in focus enough when they're up close, and I do apologize for that. Uh, I've got a GoPro and the settings for uh, YouTube um, want it to be linear and you can't use Zoom in that. This GoPro was uh, given to me by my uh, brother-in-law who passed away, <coughs> pardon me, and uh, I feel that I want to continue using it in his honor. So I will do my best to bring the stamps into closer uh, focus if I can, but <coughs> pardon me, apologies. Uh, there's not much I can do about it. Uh, it's just the way things are. I have a bit of a cough, so I'm sorry about that. We are recovering from COVID, so I will also do my best to get past that. Okay, the first truly Australian stamps were issued for postage in 1913. Uh, they were known as the kangaroos, and I have a couple examples here, which I will try to do my best to bring into more contact. I don't know how clear they will be because if you get too close to the camera, it goes blurry, as you can see. So there's kind of a sweet spot. And uh, I'm just doing the YouTube on stamps basically to inform. So if the, it's not perfectly clear um, until I get a better camera. And as I said, this has been willed to me and I would prefer to use it in, in my brother-in-law's name. I will continue doing so. So this is an example of one of the first stamps from Australia. Um, they're known as Ruse. And as again, they were put out in 1913. So Australia was rather late to the game in stamps that bore its name. However, prior to that, as you may well note with the map that I showed, there are various states in Australia. And what happened was Australia did not issue stamps as Australia until it had amalgamated all those states. And they began to issue those in uh, 1850. And the first one was New South Wales. Now I'm hoping I have some examples here, um, and I do. The next one was Victoria. So let's see what I've got here. I have several little packets that are divided off. Okay, and I'm gonna go through these ones as, as um, individually. And you can see I have them all divided off. Okay, so I'm looking at mine here, and I do not know if I have a New South Wales in here. I have South Australia, Western Australia, New South Wales. There we go. So these are some of the early issues of New South Wales uh, in 1850. And as you can see, as uh, in a lot, and I'm going to get these out of the way so you can focus on the stamp. As in a lot of um, early Commonwealth countries, they do feature Queen Victoria either in profile or uh, full uh, face forward, head and shoulders. This one is uh, looks to be um, postmarked Sydney, um, 1899, and it's New South Wales. Uh, there were several issues. I don't have a comprehensive collection of these. This is the Emu Two Pence, the blue. And again, um, Queen Victoria was both shown as a young woman and as a mature woman in both cases in profile. And this is her in the half penny turquoise. And I'm going to bring it in and bring it out so that people can uh, focus on it uh, differently. She was also shown as a mature woman. And again, this is New South Wales. This is the two pence. And then at one point, they started to show flora and fauna. And now this is a kangaroo, the one shilling. And um, I'm trying to get this other one out. There's a, it's hard to see in this stamp because it's quite old, but there is a side portrait of Queen Elizabeth, or Queen, Queen Victoria, pardon me. Uh, again, this is a New, New South Wales, and it does have a scenic in there, but again, I don't think you can see it if I bring it too close. I will try, but it looks blurry to me on the camera, so I'm sure it looks blurry to you. And then this one shows a coat of arms. So that was the first uh, issue from Australia uh, in 1850. Close behind came issues from Victoria. And uh, I always find this confusing because here in Canada, Victoria is a province as well. 
so, um, or actually um, an island and the capital of BC. So it's a little confusing. Once again, um, when I first started stamp collecting, I thought the Victoria stamps were from Victoria, Canada, until I learned otherwise. Once again, these show uh, our uh, Queen Victoria in profile in many of them. I quite like Victor the stamps from Victoria. They're, they're very pretty. Again, Queen Victoria in profile. I'm hoping that you can see that. I'm going to bring them in and out so that I can address the focus issue. Uh, I do not have a camera with a microphone on it that I can substitute for this. And I'm hoping that um, my doing this, bringing it close and far from the camera, will address the clarity and, and uh, details issue. Now, this is an interesting one from Victoria because it has an S.A. perfin on it. And as you'll learn later on, those were uh, perforated. Perfins meaning perforated initials uh, to, to stand for State of Australia. And um, I have uh, several that are really interesting cancellations. 1897 on this one. I don't, I'm hoping it's in focus. I, I can't tell. I have bifocals also, so when I look down at the camera, I don't know if I'm 100% in focus, but I'll go try. And uh, again, most of the early ones from Victoria, if, if not all of them, at least all the ones I have, are of Queen Victoria. And I'm just showing you here. And every single one thus far is of her side. Uh, as I said last time on my New Zealand one, they call these side faces in New Zealand. I don't know if they call them side faces in Australia or not. Now this one's one of my favorite because it is so tiny. And I don't know if I can do that justice, but it is really small. You can see there's my thumbnail and it's really tiny. And they have a pink version of a similar stamp. And again, it's really, really tiny. The two together are minuscule. They, they just almost make a stamp if you put them side by side, just a little bit bigger. Um, again, another half, half pence Victoria. And here is a Victoria Perfin that says OS. You can see it clearly when I take my hand away. Uh, that stands for official service. So e even as early as, as uh, the late 1800s, they were using perforated initials. Now, after Victoria, the Tasmania was issued in 1853. Now, I don't have very many Tasmanian stamps. They were three years after New South Wales and Victoria. I only have the example of two here. There weren't many stamps issued, and they were scenics. And again, I don't know how clear this is. I will bring it in and out of focus for you. Just hopefully my camera can. I did fiddle with the controls this morning, but it's autofocus on this. And because it's linear, which is as per YouTube for indoor pho uh, photographs and video, uh, it won't zoom. Okay, now this is again Tasmanian. It has uh, a lance. Launcer, I think it says, April 11th, 1890, Tasmania on it, postmark. And this one again has a postmark. Now, after Tasmania, Western Australia came into play. They were the next ones to uh, issue a stamp. And they did so in 1854. What I like about Western Australia is that, without exception, a good deal of their stamps feature swans. And they are quite popular with collectors because of that. I apologize for my shakiness. Um, I am a retired teacher in my 60s. And I went on disability oh, in 1997 because I have a neuromuscular disorder, which has been named many things. But despite whatever they're going to call it, I still have problems with my coordination in my hands. Uh, this is a sixpence swan. And it has a punch hole so that means it was probably used by a legal or uh, some sort of accounting firm because that's how they used to do their cancellations. This is a one penny swan. And there, there's a variety of these uh, swans and I, that's all I've got in my collection. There may be more um, images on their stamps, but that's all I've got. Now this one here, um, I selected on my collection because I don't know if you can see it, I'll turn it over. It has a, this is backwards, it has a WA which is a perfin standing for Western Australia. Seems to be a little bit of 
redundancy there, but that's all right. The next one uh, issued is South Australia. And these were issued in 1859. And these, uh, by large, and I don't know if they're all the same, because I've only got these examples. Uh, the ones I've got all again show Queen Victoria. Ah, my hands are not working again. And again, she's in profile. And in all cases here that I've got, uh, it, it, they're showing her as a young queen. Now there's a real little guy. It has damage on it. You can see maybe clearly from this side. Uh, but I kept it because it's overprinted OS, official service. And all of these are not in splendid condition. They've got nibble perforations or bits missing. For example, this one here, uh, it's missing quite a lot. Now I hope that's in focus for you. I'll do my best. And that's a, a nine pence, really Queen Victoria. And again, here's another from Southwest Australia, or Southern Australia, pardon me. This one has, um, oh, I think that's actually a pre-cancel. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with uh, what they did back then, but it sort of re um, resembles some of the pre-cancels I've seen from other countries. And this last one from Southern Australia. And finally, Queenland issued their stamps in 1859. And again, the ones I have from Queenland are all of Queen Victorian profile. There may be others. Uh, I cannot tell, uh, be sure, but these are what I have in my collection. And again, there are issues. This one's got some corner loss. And if you look on the back, you can see that there are issues with it. These are old stamps. And they're not going to be perfect. I don't collect necessarily for perfection. I collect for what's on the front. This one's got a, a thin on the back, and you can see it because it's very dark. But I kept it because I don't have that particular issue. Uh, here's another. This, again, is perforated. And I do not know what those perforations on the back signify. I don't know if you can see them clearly. I'll try and bring them up a little bit better. But uh, it's an A. It looks to be a Q, but I'm not sure. And this is from a pre-printed mailer or letter envelope or a aerogram. Though I don't think there were aerograms back then, so it's probably off a pre-printed envelope. It's, an, it's a half pence. So those are the stamps I have in the states. Now these are all um, what they call colonies or states. And they were federated in January 1, 1901. And, however... Uh, they continued to use their separate stamps up until the uh, first postage stamp was issued for Australia uh, in, at large in 1913. So um, the very first stamps issued by Australia were what we call the ruse, and I have showed those to you. And again, these were 1913, and I show them again just so that you understand that these were the first ones that actually had the word Australia on it, uh, independent of the state name. And at this point in time, you could still use the uh, Australia state stamps as well as these ones. Now, uh, Australia has an interesting history because, as you noticed, these were not Queen Victoria. By 1913, of course, she was no longer in reign as far as I understand. However, uh, Australia is much more uh, uh, consumed with showing its uh, scenics and pictorials and historical aspects. This is the first commemorative issued. It was issued in 1927, and it commemorates the opening of Parliament House in Canberra. And it's a very pretty decorative stamp. I'll bring it up closely. Hopefully the details will show up. Um, Australia also put out a series that I really like. These are the, the kangaroo of the coat of arms. Um, and uh, they, they are a set. There's more than just this in this set. But uh, I just took out three that I had. They're quite nice stamps. I don't know if you can see all the details or not, if it's blurry or not. But those are interesting stamps because of the coat of arms. These are all used. And these are ones that I picked out because I rather liked them. Okay, we'll go to the next little bit that I have here. Okay, their first coil stamp was issued in 1966-67. And this one was issued in a variety of denominations. 
I don't know if you can see that clearly or not, uh, it was uh, three values, three cent, four cent, and five cent. Uh, the three cent was green and the five cent is blue and I have the four cent here, which is sort of a crimson orange. They were issued in uh, strips, long strips, and uh, used basically in a vending machine-like setting. Now, another interesting thing about Australia is that they're very um, practiced in putting out sets. And this is the uh, Australian folklore set. And it's done on a first day cover from the actual Melbourne Australia Philatelic Bureau in 1980. And they're all presented as a strip here. And I, I really quite like the colorful aspect of their stamps and the fact that they're depicting some of their Australian folklore. And here it's in particular Waltz and Matilda, which is a very famous piece of music. Now I have some pages here to show. And the one that I, I'm most keen on showing, and I'm trying to do this without damaging the stamps, is this one in the middle, the Bicentenary of Australian Settlement. It was put out in uh, uh, 1988, and this is not a strip. It's, it's uh, partly in, in uh, it looks partly like it is a strip, but it isn't because of how well. This is not my, from my collection originally. This actually came from the estate lot that I purchased a month or so ago. And I found some nice surprises in it, which were these stamps that I didn't have. This is scenes from the man from Snowy River. So they were commemorating one of their famous um, uh, films or movies. Uh, this is, the again, Bicentenary of the Australian Settlement on another page. Uh, Australia puts out a nice number of Christmas issues. And this is a souvenir sheet of their Christmas issue, uh, 1986. And again, it's very colorful, very detailed, and you can get the same stamps or similar stamps that are, are associated with it in uh, singles. This is an interesting uh, issue, and I hope I can get the whole thing in. I'll lay it down. It's the Aussie, Aussie Pex World Philatelic Exp Exposition in 1984. And uh, these are all, it's a, a souvenir sheet, and they're perforated. And again, you can get individual stamps from that set if you so desire. I just, I've never seen this. And again, what's interesting about this is it's showing stamps from each one of the states that I just described. This is Victoria. I don't know what that was. Oh, this is the uh, postage due stamps that they actually put out in Australia to begin with before they had their own stamps. Uh, this is Queensland here, Western Australia. South Australia. So it kind of has on it a history of their stamp issues to a degree. Australia also is real big on uh, commemorating their uh, stamps themselves and the philatelic aspects of it. And this is a National Stamp Week miniature sheet. And then above it is the actual set uh, in singles. But I quite again, very colorful, uh, very commemorative. When you do buy stamps from Australia, one of the ways you can buy them are in uh, what they call post office packs. And this is an example of one. And this is commemorating the early years of settlement in Australia. And what's interesting is they have the uh, actual stamps inside here, uh, mint, never hinged. And then uh, above it, they have a circular which uh, gives you information on that particular uh, item. And then it tells you uh, on the back of them the designer and um, other information about it, you know, particulars about what they're showing and whatnot. Australia also has some beautiful wildlife sets. Now, I'm not going to take these out of the little uh, envelopes here. This is the butterfly set, and this is a die cut. In other words, they're punched uh, with a die instead of perforated with a perforation machine. And some of them, I don't know if these in particular, are, are self-adhesive which means they already have stick them on them. Nice for the person using the stamp, not so much for the collector because in some cases they're really hard to get off of the envelopes. This is a Christmas issue. Now the person that had this, this was from that uh, big estates, uh, nine box estate that I bought, has actually put the Scott number on here and the fact that it's die cut and the catalog price for that particular set, which is handy. That's why I've left these in their envelopes. And they're in my collection now. Again, this is another die cut. These are all their, uh, not all of their, but examples of their die cuts. 
And again, some of them do not come off the paper very well. As a matter of fact, the more recent ones, you just have to use almost like cut squares. You just have to cut the paper off of them. Now, another thing Australia has done is because they have a lot of uh, international uh, mailing. And I don't know, again, I'm going to spring that up gradually so you can see details of it. This is their $5 high value issue. Uh, they do have uh, $2 and $1, but I thought I'd show you that. The other thing done they've done as of late is to actually designate stamps specifically for international mail. And as you can see on the side there, it says International Post, and that's 80 cents. And this is the same um, with a koala bear, International Post. And what's neat about this is you can see it's perforated there. This little section we call a tab, and it's actually part of the stamp design. And, <clears throat> pardon me, though you can collect this stamp without the tab, it is more desirable to have the tab. Now, Australia also had what they call surcharge stamps. I have examples of two here. And what this is, is that they either had a stamp that they had a lot of, and the cost of mailing went up, so they had to put a new charge on them, or... Uh, the surcharge is to pay for another uh, fee or, uh, um, you know, perhaps a, a non-profit or something. I believe in these two cases, they are a revaluation of the stamp. Okay, um, again, I mentioned that before Australia uh, was a full country and then put out their actual stamps there, uh, they had postage dues. And these were... Um, they started to appear in 1909, and these postage dues were used for uh, the payment of, of uh, stampless envelopes, I presume, or for mail that uh, arrived to you and you owed the money for that uh, service. And in this case, it's a 3D. Um, these were uh, inscribed off Australia, but, and they are technically the first stamp with the word Australia on it, but they're not really a stamp. They're more of a, a Cinderella, we call them. Um, items uh, masquerading as stamps, and that's because they're postage due. Okay, and I don't know, I'm hoping that that's clear for you. Okay, the other thing I wanted to touch on is, um, and I have them here, and I'm just gonna bring the huge page over, and it's going to be a little bit of focus, but these are all Australian perfins. And what I did is I went online, and I uploaded um, from a website, a brochure that's called Official Aussie Perfins. And now this is from www.perfins.com.au. And it has a section where it says click for free download. So that's what I did. And then on some pages, it tells you the different states. And that's how I learned a little bit. Very hard to find about perfins. Again, perfins meaning uh, perforated initials. Um, uh, on, online because a lot of it is in books that people want you to buy. I was able to find out that these are, you know, typical. Uh, if it says uh, WA, as this one does up here, I don't know if you can see it, then that's Western Australia. Uh, some of these would be companies. And then if it says OS, it's official service. So that's just touching on that. Now, Australia also puts out um, some interesting stamps from places other than itself. And these are um, territories or states that they possess, one of them being Christmas Island. And what they did originally was they took Australian stamps, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll try to bring these up for detail, and then hopefully they're coming into focus, uh, that are overprinted uh, Christmas Island. So this is one of their uh, states or territories. And then uh, once Christmas Island was further established, they, they didn't use the overprints to the same degree. And I have a couple here in my hand of a, a Christmas issue. And this is 1969. Uh, um, they also have um, possession or state Cocos Keeling Island. Now again, I don't know how clear that is. I don't think it is. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, move my hand out. And these ones again, are uh, an Australian territory. And there is a stamp like this that's very similar, put out by Australian. It says A-N-Z-A-C, Anzac, Australian New Zealand is what that stands for. And again, they have 
a variety of stamps. That's Coco Keelings. It's one of their states and possessions. Um, I have a few more Christmas islands in this glass scene here. And as you can see, uh, what's ironic about Christmas islands is they put out a lot of Christmas stamps, which I think is kind of fitting. Oh, this is also, sorry, not Christmas Island. This is Norfolk Island. And this is another state of possession. Uh, right now, to the best of my knowledge, they own or have as possessions or territories Norfolk Island, Antarctic Territory, Coco's Keeling, and Christmas Island. So this is Norfolk. And as I was saying, a lot of the Christmas Island stamps by ironic um, coincidence, or maybe not coincidence, perhaps design, are Christmas issues. And this is a Christmas issue from Christmas Island. And uh, again, they're not all Christmas issues. This is a, a Coronation 1953 issue. Okay, another thing that Australia, like I mentioned, does is they have the Australian Antar Antarctic Territory. I'm just going to put this aside and pull out a couple so you can see them. And this is... Uh, their territory that they have laid claim to in Australia. And they actually show their island here. That's Australia, I believe, and there's the territory. And there's a little wedge on that that uh, shows where they have claimed possession. This one does the same. They show Australia. Then they show the wedge of the Antarctic territory that they're talking about. And this is going to need uh, postmark Sydney, New South Wales, number three, which is kind of interesting. So it's got to be its post office. Now, um, they also, Australia also has airmail stamps. And uh, these were put out in the 30s or so. I haven't really got a whole lot of information on them. And I don't have a lot. This is it for my airmail collection. They also uh, have metered mail. And this is uh, a metered mail. And it happens to be air meter mail, which is interesting. So this was uh, put out in 1980, and you can actually see, I don't know if it's clear, an image of airplane flying over Australia. And speaking of airmail, they also have what they call aerograms, which are very thin paper that you can write on and then fold up and seal, and uh, they can go in the mail. So this is 10D Australia Airmail Aerogram, and this is one with the image of their Christmas stamp on it from 1961. Now, uh, there's lots of information on Australia. This is a book that actually came in that estate uh, lot, the two box estate lot. And what's nice about this is it has a catalog of all their stamps and uh, the values at the time, uh, specimens, overprints. It shows you here on this one page all the kangaroos that I showed you earlier. Now, just by way of uh, curiosity, I'm wondering if they have any of their airmail at the back here. Some places do, some places don't. Uh, doesn't look like it. They've just got the islands, no airmail that I can see. Because it'd be interesting to know the date, and they don't have one here. Now, sometimes they put them in the middle of their books. Oh, there we go. Okay, that airmail stamp I showed you is at the very top here. And it's dated 1957. And it's a stamp uh, commemorating the inauguration of the Around, Around the World Air Service by Qantas in 1958. So that, I believe, may be their first air, air mail stamp. I'm kind of looking through the book to see if that's the case. And uh, so far, it looks like it is. Yes. I don't see any others that are air mail. Okay. So that concludes that. Uh, again, this was a look into Australia. So that's it for today. Until next time, keep on looking into and for stamps. Stamp Sleuth, signing off.